Hey guys, it's Whitney and Sarah. Hi. So we were aiming for a live and the technology gods were not shining down upon us today. So we may try again tomorrow or Monday, probably likely Monday, but we wanted to go ahead and record a video instead so we could still share some of the insights that are coming up this weekend. It's March 11th, it might be March 12th, depending on where you are, or even March 10th. But we are fast approaching Aries season. We're fast approaching the spring equinox, the astrological new year, the sun moving into Aries. And we're about, well, four days or so out from Saturn moving into Pisces. So one of the main themes that's coming up that I didn't even realize, Whitney shared, we have five planets and water signs right now. So if you're feeling bogged down emotionally, if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling like you're extra in tune with your emotions, or maybe you're just feeling kind of, you know, we're still, the sun is still in Pisces. So you might just be feeling kind of like in a dreamlike state where maybe it's hard to focus. It's hard to find your words. It's hard to concentrate, or you just kind of want to retreat. Well, that would explain why, because water signs ask us to go deep and to plunge they introduce us to our emotions that maybe we don't want to feel or that have been buried, but they also just get us in touch with what it is that we're feeling for good or bad. Um, some of the intensities of these energies are starting to show up, but yet it's almost like Pisces season is muting those energies. Pisces season is saying, yeah, okay. You know, we have a lot of water energy, but Pisces being the, the culmination of all the other signs and houses is sort of just asking us to sit with what it is that we're feeling. So for some of you, that could be very uncomfortable because there's this rumbling and undercurrent, which I talked about in the video, excuse me, that I posted earlier today of action, you know, moving from inaction to action, moving from a space of not doing to a space of doing and finding your place in the world. So you're likely on a very different path than you were when you started three years ago when Saturn had just switched signs, right? So now Saturn has switched signs again. You've reaped you know, the benefits, the gifts, you've learned the lessons, and now you're in a brand new season of Saturn, a brand new season of discipline, of organization, of reorganization, of planning, of responsibility. So what does that look like for you? So <clears throat> this weekend is a great time with all of this water energy um, to take some time just to kind of be. So it's a great time for, um, for baths or crying or uh, spending some quality time with your significant other. These are all things that are, are being brought up and are great ways to kind of move through this water energy. So I, I was like, well, this makes perfect sense. This is why I've been crying everything on the TV. Uh, when I'm not at all sad, I'm just very emotional. Um, so it's a great time to, like Sarah said, kind of sit with whatever this is, whatever is coming up. Um, and, you know, the Saturn Pisces energy, we have spent the last three years kind of observing going, holy guacamole, this is what things look like. Now is the time where we reimagine uh, because it's like, holy guacamole, I don't want it to look like this anymore. And Pisces is so dreamy that they come up with stuff, like they really do challenge the status quo. They look at things from a very different perspective and it's like, oh, well, it never occurred to me that it actually could look like that. And so, there's going to be a lot of stuff that comes up and you're going to go, oh, it never occurred to me that this particular thing in my life doesn't have to look like this. I've seen it. I don't like it. And now I can change it to something I never even imagined. So that's what this energy is like. And it's very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, particularly for people like me who are very, very uh, earth based my chart is full of so much earth energy that I don't like change. I don't like movement. I, um, I really like to, to stick with what I know, even when what I know is not what I want. <clears throat> because I want somebody to wave a magic wand and tell me that whatever choice I make, it's going to, 
be so much better. And that's not how life operates. We, we can't live in with the retrospective view. We just have to take the next step. And Pisces energy with this, this very, oh, just out of the ordinary. Oh, yeah. And there you go. Yeah, so it's just, it's very uncomfortable for some of us. Some of us are like, oh, finally, it's my time. I get to just do all of these crazy things and nobody thinks I'm crazy anymore. Yeah, that's not yeah. me. So <clears throat> some of us are loving this and others of us are very uncomfortable. And you add in all the extra water this weekend and it's like, I'm uncomfortable and I'm gonna cry about it. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna tell you that I, I wanna talk about crying and I wanna cry some more. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I'm... Interestingly, I feel really super excited, super mellow at the same time. And, and yet, you know, as you know, this is just reinforcing what Whitney just talked about, everything she talked about, you know, even if you're like, oh, I'm used to doing this, so I should just do this again, or I should continue doing this. No, listen to your gut feelings instead, because it's probably going to want to, it's probably trying to steer you in a different direction. It's interesting that this came up also because myself and others have been bloated and experiencing an expansion of the belly, like literally water, retaining water in your belly and your thighs, in your lower chakras. And this is asking us, are you paying attention to your gut feelings? And if you're not, it could be very uncomfortable. It, even if you do, it could be uncomfortable, but change is meant to be uncomfortable. The whole purpose of change is for us to get uncomfortable, for us to get out of our comfort zones, for us to have a different perspective, look through a different window, um, see things through a different lens. And if we're used to doing things, you know, those, especially those signs who have a lot of, um, those of you who have a lot of um, earth signs, Sorry, guys, this Pisces energy is I, I literally can't talk the past several days. It's like I can't find the words that they're there, but they just jumble together. And Pisces is my moon. So it, it just that's where I'm at right now. But um, I don't even remember what I was saying, honestly. So there you go. Yeah, and that's happening, too. It's like we are uh, we are very floaty. Yeah, We're very floaty. And, and hard it's hard to have uh, a conversation right now. It really is. Yeah. And it's like, um, you notice over the last several years with the, the rise of social media and texting and all of that, particularly in the youth, like they don't seem to have the ability to make eye contact and have actual conversations. Right yeah. now, we're all like that. Yeah. You know, I found myself having conversations, like not wanting to look people in the eye or looking away more than normal. I don't know why, but feeling uncomfortable feeling like I'm standing there naked in front of this person. And that's, you know, part of that is Pisces energy. We're going to strip away everything that we're not. And so we're going to start seeing more and more of the real person underneath that exterior. But yeah, it's freaking uncomfortable. I'm a Scorpio with a cancer rising. I, I like to hide in my shell, you know, and it's like, I don't feel like I have that shell right now. I don't think any of us do. We're guys, we're building a new life, right? So use your gut feelings here to build and construct that new life. It's being organized. What's really interesting is this is the sacral and the solar plexus together. The new life that talks about your sacral chakra, the, the center and seat of, um, you know, it's birth, it's creativity, it's, um, the, the feminine energy, the goddess energy. And we're asked to really rely on what it is that we know so that we can allow this new life, this new us to emerge. It really is the theme of March, I feel is emergence. We are emerging. I got two butterflies in the reading that I did earlier on the channel. So check it out. Cause it, it was so, I think the second butterfly came in the extended, but it doesn't matter. It's it, butterflies represent transformation, pushing ourselves past our limits out of that chrysalis energy, spreading our wings, not being afraid, even though we don't know the butterfly doesn't know that it's going to be, you know, a bird, a baby bird says I could fall. And sometimes they fall while they're figuring out how to fly. So that's sort of what we're doing right now. We're, we're failing so that we can learn, so that we can, it's like a trust fall, right? We, we trust fall and we might fall, we might scrape our knee, but we get back up and try again. And that's what life is asking us to do right now. For many, this is 
gonna it's just a completely different detour or you're headed in a completely different direction than you were in the past i'm talking about a change of career i'm talking about exiting a relationship i'm talking about some of you exiting toxic family members you know walking away from things that just don't don't align anymore like that you don't feel magnetized to so these are major major energies but i can't read what it says but she's walking says, away yeah walk in a good way realign yeah, exactly. So walking away from everything, perhaps for some of you that you thought you knew. Now, most of us have been doing this in stages. Most people, if you're lucky, you've been doing this in stages, starting with the eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus last year. Now we have eclipses. We have four eclipses this year. We have two um, solar eclipses in, let me get this right. I have my notes in the other room. Two, I believe it's two solar eclipses uh and uh, i can't remember off the top of my head but anyway we have two different set of eclipses we have the scorpio and taurus to finish out that round and then we also have aries libra the north nodes will shift into aries and libra i believe it's in may of this year so that's the collective consciousness that's the collective divine design that's the path that we're walking towards so we literally are in a new saturn era we're in a new pluto era at the end of this year we're in a new astrological year we're in a new, um, you know, cosmic collective consciousness year. I mean, everything is shifting. So from that place, how do you ground? How do you find your center? And that's why Whitney and I, on, on the heels of going through so much transformation within each of our own lives, through the past eight months or so, we finally settled on the course that we wanted to create. And that's the Chakra course. And it's a six-week course starting next Saturday, March 18th. And we will, it's an immersive course. So we'll plunge into each chakra. We'll have, you know, exercises, practical exercises, yoga poses that, you know, are going to help balance out each chakra, awaken. Maybe some need to be awakened and then balanced. Maybe some need to be calmed down a little bit and then balanced. But it's dedicated to the chakras because we felt like that was the foundation for the energetics. And it's designed for you to walk away with a good grasp on what the chakras are much deeper than um, what you might read, like in a Google article or something like that. What we want to do is not just give you the information, but show you how it applies to your life. So like, it's great to know, okay, well, if I'm worried about like my security or my financial situation, then that's a root chakra issue. Um, Okay, well, great. But if, if you don't know how that applies or how it shows up in your body or how it impacts uh, what you feel and your ability to have a satisfying sexual relationship or, or feel that spark of uh, joy to be, you know, the, the thing that lights you up or you're just kind of walking through things numb, you may not realize there's the connection. You may not see how it all works together. We want you to understand how each thing shows up in your life, in your body, in your relationships, and how something over here is creating some, some static over here, because it does all work together. It's a synergistic system. And so we want you to understand that, that you can't just say, oh, my left toe hurts. So that's probably why I have this issue with my shoulder. Like it doesn't work that way unless you understand how the pieces fit. So we want to show you how the pieces fit. So you can look at your life and go, you know, I feel like I need a nap. And that may be a big piece of why I'm feeling kind of disconnected in my marriage. You know, these things all work together. And it's an energetic system. Everything happens in our energetic body before it reaches our physical body. And so the ability to, to divine that and address it before it becomes an issue physically is huge. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's exciting to be able to offer like oh, hey, you're, you're wondering why you have writer's block and you can't come up with any new ideas or why you, know, you used to have the ability to hop out of bed and get excited about going to work and that's nowhere. Like, we wanna help you find this again. 
we want to help you. You know, for me, it's funny because I told Sarah this morning, I've got another cold. And I'm like, this is totally throat chakra stuff. Why is it I'm getting colds like on a monthly basis? And it's definitely throat chakra stuff. So it's like, Whitney, this whole thing where you stay quiet and you do the, the parenting and, and the, the uh, daughtering and the employeeing and don't do the Whitneying. Like if you would just take the time to go ahead and, and express some of the stuff that you're not expressing, then all of this wouldn't keep happening. So these are, these are clues that I, I too ignore <laughs> and we're good at it. We're really good at it because we're programmed, uh, particularly right. when you are um, taking care of other people. It's like, oh, well, that's such a noble and good thing. So you should put yourself on the back burner. Like we're programmed to do this from a very young age. We laud all the people who, who uh, sacrifice for others <clears throat> and look at the, hey, wait a second, I need to take a step back and take care of me as a selfish thing. And we internalize this. And then it shows up in ways like, oh, I'm getting a sinus infection you know, every other month. So this is how things tie together. And, and we can talk about how it works and we can talk about how to make it work better and give you the tools because there are a lot of them uh, and, and, and remind ourselves oil. to use them create that, that? well-oiled chakra machine. So we want the yeah. chakra to flow. Um, we talked a little bit about it before, like you don't want the chakras being too open, but you don't want them being closed. They need to be somewhere in the middle balance. If they're too open, like think about it. If your heart chakra is wide open, you're going to attract in all sorts of people who could take advantage of you. For instance, if your root chakra is wide open, somebody could bankrupt you, you know, like there, there's all these possibilities that needs to be in balance. So you have to have those healthy boundaries, you know, know when to say no, when, know when to express yourself, when to hold back, when to, you know, like when your intuition's on point, when it might be a little off. Like these are all things that we're not really taught. We should be taught in school how to use our intuition, how to have a healthy relationship, but we're not. But you can use your own energetics, your own energetic system to create that balance within yourself. You just have to have the tools to know how to do it. So we're creating this toolkit for you that you get to take with you with actionable tips, with actual physical things that you can do to get yourself balanced. And we're super excited because, like I said, this course is a long time in the making. A long We've put so much heart and soul and effort and conversation. I mean, hours and hours of conversation into this. It's well thought out. It's well organized. And we just know that the people who are really feeling, um, you might be feeling disempowered right now. You might be feeling because of what's going on externally in the world, you might be feeling lost. You might be feeling scared or all of the above, but when you can anchor into yourself and you, you know, that your energetic system is good. You're like, I'm good. Nothing from out there. Yes. I can still feel, I can feel my emotions and I can get affected, but then I know how to let it, I know how to heal. I know how to move forward from that so that you don't stay stuck in that energy. Because when we get stuck in our energy, that's when illness and disease, right? Dis-ease develops. It's, it's the lack of ease in the body. It's a lack of ease in your energy. And then for those of you who say, you know what? I don't really have the time right now, or I'm not really interested in a group setting, but I'd like to know more about how do I recharge my batteries? How do I balance out my chakra system? Whitney and I have decided to offer it. You'll get two of us. So two healers, two coaches, two teachers together. And we're going to offer one-on-one -on -one sessions for those people who really want to delve into the chakras. And I'm going to let Whitney talk a little bit about that. So we, we fleshed this out mm -hmm. some because we each bring different strengths to the table, different gifts. And uh, I can see in the chakras. I can see in the energetic body. And I can see where there are voids or where there are holes or where there's a, a flourishing. And a lot of times where there's a flourishing in one chakra, it can be used to help open some of the others. And so being able to see that, we can then say, okay, this is what's happening within your energetic body. And then the two of us together can devise this plan because Sarah brings her ability to uh, come up with the 
the methodology or the, the tactics to, to shift this or to fill it in or whatever needs to happen. So we put that together and come up with a customized or an individualized plan. So you don't have to necessarily know every chakra, how it works. You can go, oh, okay, this is what's going on with me. And here's my prescription to, to work on it. And the thing, the thing that we are very, very clear on is that we offer the tools. We tell you, hey, this is what you can do to address this. You have to be the one to walk the path and actually utilize those tools in order to affect the changes that you, you want to affect. So we, we're really excited about this because not everybody wants to learn all the things. They just wanna go, oh, you know, where am I off kilter and how do I get back on track? And this is what we're going to offer together. And we're super excited because we want the people that wanna understand it and how it all works together to have that. And the ones that just say, you know what? I'm so busy and this is not a passion for me. Being well is a passion for me. So can you help me figure out how to do that? So we can do both. And we're super, super excited about that. We're excited about both. I mean, equally. So um, I love working in groups. I've done it several times. This will be my fourth or fifth, the fourth, my fourth group Um well, I, and I've worked with groups like corporations and employees and things like that. So technically there's, there's more than that. There's lots more, but within this realm of um, spiritual coaching, you know, this is my fourth group. And I really find that the bonds that you form within the group, the other people in the group, the conversations you have, it, it allows you to go deeper, to know yourself more. So yes, Whitney and I are available, but so is, you know, everyone else in the group from different countries, different different backgrounds, different experiences. And then you share and we create the sacred space of sharing. And if you ask anybody who's attended my other groups, they'll tell you one of the best things they took away. One of the greatest takeaways from the group was the ability to make friendships and bonds and connections with other people in the group. So that's great for people who maybe you lack that and maybe you really want that. Um, and I would encourage someone who says, I don't know, I get shy in a group. You don't have to speak. You can just listen. You don't even have to participate. You can just listen and be present. Maybe push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone. And for others, it's just a lack of time. Um, some of you have expressed, hey, I don't really have time for that right now. I've got a lot going on. I've got a lot of pots that I'm boiling, but I'm interested in it. So this is that's why we wanted. we came up with another way to work with us where you don't have to be a part of the group necessarily, but you can still reap the benefits and get the healing. Whitney and I, as she said, are really, really passionate about empowering you. Whereas other coaches or healers might say, oh, you need to see me on a weekly basis. That might be necessary upfront for some people or monthly basis, whatever it is. But we don't want to have to hold somebody's hand for a year. That's not our goal. Our goal is to help you to empower yourself, to understand yourself so we can move forward and help more people. That's our philosophy. We share that. And I think that, you know, that's the wave of the future. I think that reliance on something outside of self for an extended period of time, it just doesn't make sense to us anymore. And I think, I think we've all gone within so much over the past three years that now we get to apply that. It's like, okay, I've gone within, I know myself, I trust myself. I still wanna learn. I'm taking an astrology course right now. I'm still gonna learn from other people because I recognize that other people know things that I don't know. But it's just, I'm not going to look at someone as, you know, you're, you're better than I, or you're above me. And I think that's sort of what's happened in the past with a lot of these healing disciplines is, well, I know more than you. And there's been ego and there's just been all sorts of confusion. So we want to really make it so clear that we're in this to, to help you succeed with yourself, with understanding yourself and being able to find a place of balance within your life, within yourself. Well, in a place of trust, because while there may be people uh, who know more than you do, we may know more than you on, on some certain aspect, but there is no one who knows you more than you. And so we don't want you to override your own self-knowing based on thinking that somebody else knows better or than you. Or self-agency. Yeah. Right. So this is where, um, you know, That's the it. word sovereignty comes up so much lately. And, and 
we are sovereign beings and we are culturally trained to give up our sovereignty. And it is time to, to take that back. And the best way to take that back is to learn to trust this inner knowing, this inner voice that we have, we have not developed. Okay, yeah. It's a muscle. So let's develop this muscle so that we can be, um, we can be reminders of this inner wisdom that you already have. And you'll go, oh, that resonates. That resonates. It's because you already have it inside. And we are just unlocking something that allows you to go, oh, that's that thing. I'd forgotten that I knew that. I know that. Okay. Because your soul body does. And a lot of walking through this is just remembering. Suffering. It's I mean, not that really we are giving you the information. We are reminding you of information that you already contain. Yeah. It's so, a remembering of who you are that's contained you're you're you exist in multitudes from many many lifetimes many many dimensions many many life forms many um, memories and that's what a, a good teacher does is they unlock the door and they say yeah okay but you have to walk through it like i've unlocked it for you but i can't force you to make that step so you might stand in the doorway for weeks months years and it's up to you to cross that threshold. And we are all teachers. We are all students. We are all teachers. We're all thespians. We're all we're all creators. We're all activists. We're all we 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 contain multitudes. So this is this exists in all of us already from the inception of time. This is just a reminder. We're reminding you of your true divine nature and essence of who you are as a creator in this three D realm. I mean. Look, the 3D realm is full of illusions. It's full of perceived blocks and limitations. We're going through massive, massive perceived limitations right now, right? As we watch things crumble. YouTube, for instance, is changing. You seen? I mean, I was just talking to Whitney, one of my favorite creators, special books by special kids. They have 3 million plus subscribers. They're experiencing issues, right? Because of the, the different... I don't know, twists and turns that YouTube's taking. I've experienced it. I felt it over the past year. Everyone's feeling it. So we're having to get more creative. We're having to look outside of what we thought was us, right? For instance, I am a YouTube creator. And the universe says, actually, you're more than that. That's just one aspect of self, you know? Or I'm a teacher, or I'm a wife, or I'm a brother, or I'm an uncle, or whatever. I'm an engineer. And the universe is saying, step outside of that construct because there's more constructs out there. There's limitless constructs and people like Joe Dispenza and other teachers, right? Um, they get us to look outside of ourselves. They get us to basically, basically, if you've done any of Dispenza's meditation, it's like lose the sense of self so that you can become everything, right? You are no one, no thing and no body. And when you can do that, you access limitless abundance. So when the chakras are working, when they're aligned, when they're well oiled, that abundance in all forms is welcome into your system. Um, healthy relationships, more money, the job of your dreams, right? Whatever limitless it is. Ideas. What's that? Limitless ideas. Limitless ideas of who you could be or who you are. Instead of saying, well, I am this because I've done this for 30 years. Or maybe you have a dis-ease and you've identified as that dis-ease right? I have fill in the blank, but you are not fill in the blank. So it's like dis dissecting those parts of ourselves that we've identified as ourself for so long. So don't fret and don't fear. We are all going through this together. I mean, that's, that's my main, you know, that's the message. We're going through this together. We all volunteered to be here now, knowing that this was Either, either a definite or a possibility. I think we knew this was a definite. I think we knew exactly, maybe not exactly how it was going to unfold, but we knew that there were different timelines and this was probably going to happen or something similar. And yet we're here. And so, yes, things are ever changing. It's chaotic out there. And that's not going to cease anytime soon, right? That's not going to stop anytime soon. It's not going to stop being chaotic out there. But the only thing we can manage and we can learn to trust is ourselves, is our own sense of agency over self, over our decisions, over our life. So that's ultimately what we are here to guide you towards. 
And we're excited about it. We are excited we're about excited. it because we are also on the journey. So we this are on a, the journey. This is a teaching, a sharing, but it's also for the two of us a remembering. It's mm -hmm. because it's like peeling an onion. Just because I did work over here doesn't mean that I don't have deeper work to do, you know, just a few layers in. So totally. it's really just this never ending journey. And it's really exciting. And quite frankly, uh, life had gotten a little flat. So mm -hmm. I'm excited just to be excited. And, and I want to share that. I'm excited to be excited. That feels like another theme for March and April. I'm excited to be excited. Like I'm excited to be alive. I'm a, that's how I feel. I'm excited, but it's subdued because I'm, you know, we're in Pisces and my moon is in Pisces. So I'm sitting here and you might not see it or feel it, but I am really excited. I just can't find a way to fully express it yet. It's like, yeah, it's but we're also, we're also like under the water, right? All this water yeah. and think about it. When you do something under the water, it has impact above the water that we don't see while we're still in here. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff that's happening, it feels a little, you know, it's going to be like big, big, feels big. Contained. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I, so I go to my swim classes. The, some of you guys know, this is my new passion. And that's one of the reasons I love my new city so much. So I went to my swim class and then I, I've been staying after lately and I just wanted to just go under. And I did, I think eight or 10 laps just back and forth. And I, I, I was, I felt like, a dolphin or a mermaid. I just needed to feel, I needed to embody that energy. And it was, it, I was submerged. I needed to be under the water. I don't have a bathtub where I'm at. Um, so I like, I needed to be under the water and feel that water over me. I wanted to plunge. I wanted to drown everything out, but not in a bad way, not, not from a place of anxiety or depression. Just, I kind of just wanted to be in my little water cave. And I've been feeling that all through Pisces season. And now it makes a lot of sense that so if you're drawn towards water right now, drinking more water, being around water, even guys, if you can't be around water, if it's like intense winter where you are, buy a little pond, like an indoor pond or, an, or, or water, water fountain for your animals or do something so you can hear the sound of water so you can be around water. That's healing. Or if you don't have a bath like me, buy Epsom salt, buy a tub and put your feet in it, you know, or sometimes, um, and this can be really damaging to your hair, but sometimes I'll just put the warm salt water and just let it run over my head. And it just feels like a warm pillow, a warm blanketed pillow, but find a way to be near water, you know, while we're in Pisces season, because we are cleaning away the remnants of what was, we're still in the process of expunging what was so that we can walk into airy season really with a clean slate. Airy season to me feels like knocking on a door that we've never been in front of before we don't know what's around the corner, but we're super excited because we feel like it's going to be something great. So we're all going to be knocking on our own doors and we're going to meet, you know, each other behind whatever doors we're at, but we all have our own door to walk towards. Aries is the individual. Aries is the I energy. It's opposite Libra is the we energy. It's the partnership energy. So we're going to be learning in Aries season how to discern, and especially with the eclipses in Aries and Libra this, uh, this year, we're going to be learning how to discern between being an individual and then working with others and playing nice with others. And there is this theme, like I've been talking about for a couple of months now about like partnership versus single. I think many of us are learning how to have healthy partnerships right now. And it starts with self. It starts with self. You cannot, I used to think this was bullshit. You can't have a healthy relationship with anybody out there if you don't like yourself, if you're not right with yourself, you cannot, it's impossible. It might look like it. You can deceive yourself for a long time, for decades, even thinking it's healthy. But at the end of the day, if you're married and you're, or in any sort of relationship, we have a best friend, but you don't like yourself. You're relying on what that person thinks of you. You're relying on them saying, I love you or them telling you you're awesome, but you don't feel that, or you don't believe that you can't even access the depth of what that relationship could be because you're lacking it within self. So we're learning how to have that healthy relationship within self first and foremost. We're establishing that as our foundation. Now, as we hit airy season, we're going to hit the ground running. We are, we are airy season. I mean, it's like things are going to start to get really busy. I already have a to-do list like for the next few weeks here. So things are going to start to get really busy 
a lot of stuff in the 3D. Um, that fire is going to be lit under our feet, under our bums, and we're going to go. So continue with your prep stuff now. Get chop the veggies, right? Chop the to do list. Do everything you need to do now so that you're not as overwhelmed because it's easy to get exhausted during Aries season because Aries is the warrior. Aries is like, I'm going to go to war. And sometimes war is your own mind or war is your to-do list, right? It can be anything. It doesn't have to be a negative, um, like a negative thing that it's going to war with. Aries is just like, I'm ready. I'm the warrior. I'm going to put on my battle. I'm going out there on the battlefield. What am I going to find? So start laying the groundwork now so that it's easier to get through Aries season. And those of you who have a lot of fire in your chart, um, this is going to be a particularly active season for you, right? Whether it's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, particularly Aries energy, if you have a strong placement there, like a rising sign or a moon sign or a sun sign. But those of you with some Leo and Sag energies or the opposite of Aries, Libra energies, you're going to be feeling this. If you, if you have a lot of Libra placements, you know, strong Libra placements, you might be feeling the tug between, you might be feeling some strain in your relationships because Aries season is trying to individuate you, okay? So this can play out in a lot of different ways. We'll talk more about Aries season once we actually get there, but I like to prep because it is, this is, this is the beginning, that start that we've all been waiting for, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're coming out of the fog. We are. We're coming out of the fog. So much more to come. If you are interested or you have questions about working with us, I cannot speak. It's a good time to just working with us. I can talk. I can do this. <laughs> Whether this is, it's just been happening, guys. It's so embarrassing. I was at my mechanics the other day and I was like, where's Sharon Hart? I'm like, I don't even know what I just said. And I just looked at the guy and I go, I don't know how to talk apparently. Um, okay. If you'd like to work with us or you have questions about working with us individually, you want to work with us, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Whitney and I, or if you want to be part of the group, or if you're just like, Hey, I'm ready to register. I want to do both the, you know, the options are there. If you decide you want to do both, which a lot of people decide they want to be a part of the group and work with us individually, then we have a special a savings that we're offering for those people. And that's just one way to really accelerate your, your process. So let us know. We're here to answer questions. Let us know in the comments below. We'll look for those in the video as well to answer those questions for you. And we hope that this has been helpful and inspiring. Thank you guys. Again, we are excited. I am excited to be excited. And I know that Sarah is going to be excited uh, once she can express that. <laughs> once I can actually formulate a sentence. It's, it's so I mean it's here it's it's like all in my belly I'm contained that's why my belly's so swollen it's all the excitement <laughs> yeah. that I'm trying to get out but I am very excited and I'm excited to be able to express my excitement right it just feels good <laughs> to feel it just feels good to feel right now because like I said things have gotten a little flat so yeah feeling absolutely. like there is something brewing something you know, percolating is just really fun and it feels good to have a shift in energy. So anyway, we would love to have y'all in any way you want to come, but we, uh, we are just glad that you were here participating. We're, we're glad that you're here on earth. We're glad that you watched this video. We're glad that hopefully we gave you a laugh or we created curiosity within you. We're, we're happy for, even if you got triggered, that's okay too, right? That's healing, that's growth. So we're happy for it all. We're happy to be sharing space with you guys and time. Until the next time, stay tuned and we will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye, Bye guys.